So in today's episode of Taking Back My Power, I've got my good friend Kieran, who's going to be sharing a scenario where he felt like his power was taken away from him. I'm going to be asking him what he and what the scenario was regarding, what was the outcome of the scenario when he felt like his his power was taken away and um, what he could have done differently and if there's any advice he can give to people in similar situations so thank you Karen, for joining me no worries it's nice to be here it's always a pleasure to have you on my podcast Karen. so yeah can you give me and the listeners a bit of a background of the topic you're gonna talk about based on taking back your power yeah, of course. So this one was quite recent and actually I'm sort of, I guess, still in the process of sort of taking back my power now. You know, this was sort of, what would it have been, June, July of this year. And like, you know me, kids, you know, my work is a big thing for me and I sort of, I work in banking of a sort. And, you know, that as an identity to me and of me is really important. Like, I want to be successful. Uh, I want to impress myself. Uh, and one thing that sort of I have gone through the vast majority of my life being pretty good at is staying up and you know just taking things in my stride and not letting stuff get on top of me and i was working on this, this deal at work and i was sort of running this transaction and trying to make it happen and it was a um it was a deal in Italy. There were about 12 diff- different parties, different whether they were people providing money or people taking money, but 12 different lots of people involved. And I had to get them all together to make this deal happen. And I had to make it happen by a certain day. And, you know, when you deal with people who work in different countries and who come from different cultures, not everyone is the same. People work in different ways and people behave in different ways. And basically, by like, you know, by the end of that transaction, um, you know, we got it done on the day that we needed to but it didn't look like we'd get it done four or five days before but i was you know basically i'd come home um and like almost be having panic attacks right and I, i'm a very very chilled person as you know and that's not me that's never ever happened to me and so you know in the moment i just had to get on with it because ultimately getting that deal done was what mattered at that moment in time right i had to matter afterwards but i i've not felt as a sort of individual so lost within myself before um so you know that i guess that's the background to when i lost my power and it's not that it was taken away from me it's that i lost myself in the situation and i wasn't really able to sort of cope with that and deal with that and so yeah that's the sort of that's the background to the situation when i when i sort of lost my power so you said that you work in the financial sector and you had to have a specific deal done by a specific day. Now, luckily for you, you, with all your hard work, and I've known you for a number of years, and like you said, you know, you're a very cool, collective guy. You don't let things get to you. When you felt that pressure get to you, like, how did you handle it? Did you handle it? Was there ever a time that you felt like, oh my God, I'm going to have like a nervous breakdown if I don't seal the deal? by this specific day. Oh yeah, definitely. Like two, three days beforehand, I vividly remember it. it was a Monday and I came back on a Monday night and I had to sort of walk outside into my garden and like try and regulate my breathing, right? I was just a real mess. But the reality is and was that the way that I function, at that point in time, I had like a week left to get stuff done, three, four, five days, I don't know what it was, but a week, let's say, left to get that deal done and I needed that week. So I couldn't focus on me being a mess. That had to be secondary, that had to be put to the you know put to the side uh, and I just had to get on with it so you know in that very sort of you know traditional and not particularly healthy way I was like I'll deal with me later now I just have to focus uh, yeah that was how it was at the time and so during that time like you mentioned on our podcast you're married to a very wonderful lady even though I haven't met her personally but, but you for are right. she's very yeah. wonderful yeah, even though I haven't met her personally, but from what you've told me about her, she's a very extraordinary woman. So in that period, was, you know, did your wife, was she, was she someone that you know that you can rely on or was she someone that was not able to lift you up when you were kind of feeling down? You know, it's funny, right? I mean, 
so Esther is brilliant at uh, lifting me up when I'm feeling down, actually. But sometimes you sort of pass that point and the only, you're so far, like in your mind, you're so far in a hole. The only person that can bring you out is yourself. And with Esther, I'll often say, to, I say often, you know, when I get in that place, which is not thankfully that often, but I don't really want sort of positivity around me or anything like that. I definitely want someone I can rely on and someone who's a proper like rock. And Esther always is for me, but I don't, I almost don't want to be lifted out of it because when I'm there, I feel like I'm there for a purpose to try and get something done. I don't want to be out of that place, which I, I know how sort of counterintuitive that sounds, but the focus is totally sort of, it's laser focus on achieving something and everything else is sort of pushed out of the way. I was going to say, so yeah, so obviously like, you know, at that time, your main focus was on, you know, getting this deal done. <laughs> Like, so did you have any focus at all for, like, your kids or was that kind of on the back burner until you got this deal done? Uh, I mean, look, you know, I, was I able to be really present with them? Like, not really. You know, I could be around, but my mind would be somewhere else. So, yeah, I think, like, you know... And, and we'll come on to it when we come on to the taking back. But my sort of the identity that I sort of, as a person that I aligned with most was me as as this guy that gets like complicated, difficult deals done. And I think when the, when I sort of lost my power and, you know, you could call it power, you could call it confidence, right? But was when that identity was, was challenged because, you know, I very rarely in my life before I've not thought I'd get something done however kind of crazy that was I've always had the sort of self-confidence to be like yeah I'll get that done gonna have to work hard but we'll, we'll get there this was one of the first times where I've been like this might all fall apart and you know at the time it really mattered to me um and so my identity my own sort of self-identity was being massively challenged and yeah so that's what I kind of I said earlier I felt very lost because yeah. my own belief in myself my own sort of my own identity was was at risk of being totally challenged. You know, had I not got that deal done, it would have been like, well, what am I then? If I'm not the guy that gets those deals done, what am I? And so, yeah, that was that was why there was so much focus. And yeah, with regards to my kids, family, friends, all that sort of stuff, I just couldn't really be present in my mind. So how did you manage to regain control of your your power. So like after that happened, I had a couple of weeks just to like recover because I was a total mess. And um, you know, I then said, look, I need to go see someone. I need to get some help because I knew that I shouldn't be in a place where I was one allowing that to happen to myself, but even worse, doing that to myself, right? And loading that pressure on in a way that I wasn't able to cope with because when you're doing that to yourself, it's just destructive, right? Yeah. And so I was like, look, I need to go speak to someone, and I thought about counselor, and I undenied about it a bit. And anyway. I got a I got a random uh, message on LinkedIn from someone I used to go to school with okay. who, who decided that they wanted to become a life coach, which is ultimately counseling in a bit more of a structured way, right? Yeah. He, like, out of the blue reached out. We hadn't spoken to each other for probably a decade, maybe more, and said, you know, he said, hey, do you want to have a chat? Because I'm doing this thing. It might be interesting, whatever. Had a chat and thought, you know what? I'm going to give that a go. So it was very, it was very serendipitous. But, you know, I thought I'd give that a go. And, and you know, I've been, I'm you know, probably, now nine ten weeks through out of a sort of out of a 12 week program so to speak and you know we we speak once a week but it's been a very structured way of trying to work out to myself who i am and what matters to me and try and think about the world in a slightly different way so that in those situations you know i can't i want those situations to occur i like it i like being up against it and being really under pressure it's when i do when I work best, but I need to be able to manage those situations. And I kind of always had been up until this point, but I was like, this was just a total fail, right? I just failed at managing myself. And so I needed to, to deal with that failure and to address it head on and take back the power rather than just letting it all slide away and so that's what i've been doing you know looking at what are my identities as a as a human right you know yes i'm a guy that gets deals closed and i'm mr reliable in that way but i'm a husband i'm a father i'm a son i'm a friend i'm all of these different things that you know i am and i spent time i, I spent time tracking what i do to try and see well how am i spending my time between those different identities and those different roles that I have in my life. And is that the balance that I want them to be in? And I've spent time thinking about, you know, where I want to be in 10 years time and, and what kind of person I want to be and what I want to, what I want to have achieved and spend time working through what my values are so that I could have something to anchor how I live my life and what my goals are, all, all that sort of stuff, trying to really go back to basics of me as a person. And, you know, it kind of sounds, 
it could sound very sort of, uh, you know, self-centered and, you know, it's definitely by my standards anyway, very modern to spend that much time on yourself, thinking about yourself. But I have like that process of, of trying to understand myself better and understand how to manage myself and understand what directions I should be pushing myself in and spending my time in has been something where I feel like I've really taken back like agency, right? I'm I'm now in a place where I've given myself a foundation of understanding so that I can make real decisions about how I'm spending my time and how I'm behaving. And I, for me anyway, that's been super important to just really try and get back to basics, you know? So if you could go back five months ago, like back in July or... And when when you first took the deal or started talking to yeah. these other people in all these other countries, if you could go back and have a conversation with, with yourself what would you say to that Kieran back in July that like that Kieran was just too narrow you know like <laughs> just too just not physically kids I get it too like the focus was just too narrow you know like would I go back and not try and do that deal no would I not have really felt the pressure and got stressed out at the time no but I think that I'd have a bit more of an understanding of myself and be able to potentially deal with that in a different way you know and 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 just channel that pressure and that stress in a different way but you know it's funny because you know i've said that that was that was my failure right i'm not looking around and saying it was really difficult here there everywhere that's that's what i do right that's what i've chosen to do with my life so i just failed at managing myself and i gotta be honest i'm quite glad because you know sometimes you've got to have failures things have got to go against you yeah. for you to turn around and address something and, and actually, in my opinion anyway, it's great to succeed all the time and it's wonderful, but you don't learn anything, right? It's when yeah. you're really up against it, you fail, you say, I'm going to deal with that. That's when you learn something. And, and I'm honestly quite grateful for the opportunity to have, like, have learned something and be spending some of my time now focusing on trying to understand myself and build a framework of how to manage myself that I can then apply in the future. So, so do, you, do, do you think, because you just um, mentioned a while ago that, you know, a friend of yours that you used to go to school with is you know, reached out to you and he's now kind of your life coach. So do you think yeah. that that invitation from your friend kind of saved you a little bit? Like, do you yeah. think... Like, I, look, I'll check it out there, right? And I, you know, I think I am very lucky and there have been many times in my life where stuff has just kind of come across... I've just come across stuff at a time that has really worked for me. And I feel very grateful for that. And this was one of those where an opportunity was put in front of me and, you know, I've taken it and I am finding that process remarkably, like remarkably important. Uh, sort of a bit of just stepping back and, and looking at what I'm about and how I impact on other people and all that sort of stuff, right? And so, yeah, it was massively fortunate and it gave me it's given me an outlet to sort of explore that stuff which is hard to, you don't it's hard to explore by yourself so, explore with just other people right so if i said to you what is Cameron thing about what would you say i am about i'm definitely about my work right that and that hasn't changed and i, I don't really want that to change but the, one of the things so one of my one of my values is is communities and when this guy asked me to explain what i meant by that i referenced fab right so where you and i met because and you know allow me this trip down memory lane but you know we kind of as a as a group of students and merchant tailors we all came together to raise money to put on this week right yeah we all had pretty similar backgrounds we all saw each other every day da 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 Right. But this community was built where people were trying, all of us individuals were doing what we were good at and coming together to try and raise money and doing what we were good at to maximize that. So we had as much as we could have for, for the week in Easter. And then, you know, you and Marcus and Ashley and Brendan and everyone else came along. Right. And you're from crazy different backgrounds to us. Right. And you've got crazy different things going on in your lives. We're just, we're, we're you know, we're fun to, we're, without fab. Our lives might not, have, our paths might not have crossed ever, right? Yeah, definitely. And so it could have been that that was a week and that was fine. And our little fab, like, you know, Merchant Taylor student community stayed very close. But, you know, 
and you guys came along for a week and we had a great time and that was it but it wasn't and you guys and us guys formed a community in and of ourselves and that grew and that stayed right I mean we're doing this today exactly yeah and and you guys added as much to that community as we added to that community right and it was a real it was a real family again with everyone learning from each other everyone teaching each other everyone coming together to make something better than any one of us could have done right and that you know that's something that i've realized is massively important to me where i work with my family all of them um, and so